with running back Brees Hall. Brees, not the prettiest win for the Jets, but you guys were able to get it done. What ended up working for this Jets in the last two minutes and in overtime? Um, just just strain and grit. Um, still believing that we could put that we could win the game. You know, the defense, they were giving us, you know, great field position. They were stopping them all night and you know, um, Personally, I just feel like the offense, we just got to be better. But we stuck together, and in the end, we came out and got the win. So it was great. It was great. You personally get that 50-yard touchdown at the end of the first quarter. Walk me through that play. What did you see on that play that opened up the field for you? Um, Just knowing pre-snap that Zach's probably going to throw me the ball. And I still kind of see where the linebackers are at. So I know where I'm, I'm going to have to make my move at. And then I get in the open field and just let my natural ability take over. And this offensive line, not not having Wes Schweitzer, not having Connor McGovern, what about the resiliency of this offensive line? Yeah, they, we, I mean, they had to, guys had to come in and just, you know, they had a great D-line and guys had to come in and put their best foot forward and we did that. We had some struggles, um, but, you know, we just, we kept staying together, we kept pushing and we got the win. Jets win, how does that sound? Oh, it always sounds great. It always sounds great. <laughs> Thanks, Breeze. Here with Thomas Moore said, Thomas, just what was the end of that game like for your perspective being on the sideline? Um, it was awesome. Um, we hung in there the whole day, and, um, you know, this has just been a really special team to be a part of because no matter how it goes, guys just keep fighting. And um, to be dependent on in big moments is fun, and it's exciting, and it's one of the things I love about this game. So um, just really cool experience today. Three punts inside the five-yard line. How much do you take pride in being able to pin a team deep like that, and what went into today's strategy? Yeah, I mean, I would love to do it every time. Um, our defense is, is um, really – those guys are coming up to me telling me, don't worry about hitting a touchback, right? Like, be aggressive, try to pin them deep. And if the worst that happens is we hit a touchback, um, they still got to go 80 yards to score. So it's been fun to kind of – be given that permission by coach and um, and by the guys we have out there, you know. And it's just been an amazingly uh, um, I've just I don't even know how to say how I feel right now. Yeah. This team has been really um, it's just my first team after getting released in New Orleans a few years ago and to be back and to feel um just be a level of respect from teammates and coaches and um, and to be depended on so heavily this year. Uh, we punted a lot. Um, it's just really, really gratifying and um, it's an awesome testament to hanging in there. Um, I'm just really grateful to be here. You, you kind of touched on it in your answer there, but if you could categorize what this team and what the New York Jets mean to you, how would you put that into words? I know it gets overused. Guys talk about being part of a family, but we really have a, a, a really unique crew of people here, um, players and coaches. And um, I don't know, I'm just I'm just really grateful to be here. And, um, you know, as you get older, which I'm the old man in the league at my position now, um, you know, you get closer to the end and, and you... It's impossible not to just things mean so much when you really love it. And um, I'm like just such a sap right now. But um, <laughs> I just can't tell you how grateful I am for Coach Boyer and um, Coach Saha, Joe Douglas. They kind of took a risk in coming to get me. There's a lot of ways that that could look bad on paper. And uh, I, I just can't. I'm just very grateful. Awesome, Thomas. Congratulations on the win. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Go Jets. Here with wide receiver Alan Lazard. Lazard, take me through the last, like, minute and a half, two big chunk plays that helped end up tying this game. Yeah, I'm still trying to let that stuff marinate and resonate to what just happened and what we just went through, you know. Um, it seemed like they were ready to celebrate and throw a parade for being able to beat us in, you know, obviously a, a game that we didn't play very well in. Um, but I think they're just uh, a testament to this team and the belief that we have in each other, the fight that we have in each other, um, and ultimately just be able to execute when the, when the time matters the most. What about Zach Wilson changed in that last minute and a half to you and continued to change in overtime? He really seemed to just kind of break loose. Yeah, I think Zach did a great job. Um, obviously, we were struggling all games, not just him, not just the O-line. I mean, shit, I had two drops. 
Um, we, we, we were just struggling all over the board offensively, especially. But just being able to get the ball rolling, get that first down going and stuff, especially the, the last drive of the fourth quarter, Garrett catching the ball across the middle, being able to get up on the ball and be able to run the next play where I was able to catch it, get us in a good field position for Greg to be able to put it through. Um, that's all it needs, you know. That's all, that's all it really takes at the end of the day is just to have more points than the other team. You know, <laughs> no one really cares on how you get those points or how many points you get as long as you finish with more points, then we're happy. True, that is how you win football games. Now, Alan, what about this offensive line unit? You have Wes Schweitzer go down, Connor McGovern go down. Not only did everyone step up, but Xavier Newman is at center taking snaps for the first time in his NFL career. Yeah, that was huge for him, obviously. He got here two weeks ago, maybe, um, in the middle of the week, if that, too. So I'm very proud of him <laughs> and the rest of the O-line. I'm just being able to step up and be able to work together because a lot of their – um, success as an as a individual relies on the unit as a whole, be able to communicate, be able to be on the right people and everything. So for those guys to be able to come in um, to replace those guys, obviously we can't wait to get them back and everything. We're going to miss them. But I think that was such a huge job and a huge part in, in, in our win today. Last one for you. What's the next step as you guys gear up for a Monday night football game to clean up some of those mistakes and make it a little bit more of a high-powered offense? Yeah, first it starts in the film room. Just being able to go back and see the mistakes that we made and understand why. And once you understand why, then we can go back and correct them in practice throughout the week and stuff. <clears throat> now, obviously, we'll have a, a better game plan and we'll come out and put a better show on. But um, we know what we can do, and we just got to go out there and show it. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Alan. Thank you. Zach, you just said before we came on, that was ugly. But it's an ugly win. And not an ugly loss. So how about this locker room reacting to a win that, honestly, from upstairs, it was hard to understand how you guys were able to pull that off. Yeah. Like, like I said, winning is all that matters. You know, uh, the absolute grit, you know, from this team, the ability to come back, never quit, you know, especially as an offense, not, not playing well as an offense. You know, the first two-minute drill, I get sacked, and then I get sacked on the fourth down, you know, plays that can't happen, and then... We get 23 seconds, 24 seconds, and we're able to go in two plays all the way, get us in field goal range and go. So, I mean, the absolute no quit from those guys. And, you know, obviously you got to give the defense credit. We need to be better for them. We need to be more consistent for them. Um, they're absolutely balling out, playing awesome football. Special teams are playing awesome football, and we need to find a way to be better offensively. How about your offensive line, though, and how those guys hung in there, considering you were down to your fourth string center today. Yeah. I mean, had, had you guys ever even shared a center exchange in practice? before all of a sudden you had to go out there and do it in the game? We haven't, man. And, uh, you know, props to X for stepping up. You know, first West moves in at center. We bring Billy in, and then X is, you know, in at center, and Billy's at right guard, and, you know, we're playing musical chairs with these guys. But, um, you know, those guys definitely stepped up and played it, played the best they absolutely could, you know, fighting their tails off. And uh, um, a lot of props to those guys up front because that's not easy to do. For you personally, I know it was a struggle, but somewhat similar to the end of the Denver game. Even with an entire game filled with struggle, you rip a couple of throws at the end of the game that help you win it. What does that do for you? Yeah, that's that's. I kind of look at it like I, I got to be that one at the end of the game that has to find a way. You know, there's not going to be a lot of things open on schedule. There's not going to be anything that's easy or simple there at the end. You know, the defensive line is teeing off, so quarterback's job is to try and find a way to make the big plays there at the end. And Allen did an unbelievable job of coming out of his route on that scramble drill and finding him there. And then, you know, the ability to clock it with 11 seconds was uh, was unbelievable. So thanks for the time. Enjoy the win. Thank you. Here with Jeremy Rucker. Jeremy, how can you put into words what happened at the end of the game there being on the sideline? Yeah, I mean, um, like I said before, I think there's no quit in this offense. I think we uh, had some things not go our way early, but um, we get put in those situations every day in practice. We, we, we have a two-minute end-of-game situation where – um, Coach Smash gives us a situation where we need to either get a field goal or a touchdown or, or make a few chunk plays and um, execute those those little things like clocking the ball with one second left. And um, that you could just see there was no panic. We felt like we have an advantage of that um, and, and be able to execute that at the end of the game and give us a chance going forward in overtime. That was really big for us. To score seven points in the first half and then be in that situation late in game, how do you keep up the confidence in the huddle to go down the field and execute? Yeah, I mean, we know. So seeing what our defense was doing, um, they couldn't they couldn't get anything going in the passing game. They were just trying to run it down their throat, keep the keep the uh, ball in their hands, and, and keep us on the sideline. And um, anytime our defense has a chance or a, a slither of hope to make a play for us, they've done it all year. So I mean, as an offense, you really build on that. Um, you kind of feel bad for them sometimes, but at the end of the day, we're just a little off, and we know what we need to do to get, to get going. And um, we have the utmost confidence in everybody on our team. Uh, we had some guys step up on the line today. It was a 
a little curveball thrown at us there. But um, like I said, we, we got put in a situation in the game, and we got to really execute that and show us how prepared we were and um, came out on top. Here with Captain C.J. Mosley. C.J., what was your initial thought as those last two minutes were kind of winding down? Uh, man, I was just waiting on the offense. That's it. Um, you know, we anytime we get out on the field when it's a close game like that as a defense, our only goal is to either get a turnover or get the ball back to our offense. So once we got off the field, you know, we, we just looked, we was praying for the offense. That's it. You know, they made two spectacular plays. Uh, we got the pass interference and obviously, you know, uh, Greg the leg kicked it in the upright. So, I mean, that's, that's exactly what we wanted, man. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty the whole, the whole game, but it's time, when it's time to execute, especially at the end of the game, that we did that. What was Coach Sala's message to the team after this overtime win? It don't have to be pretty, but we got to, we got to win. <laughs> that's the message. Um, but man, that's that's really how it goes, man. Sometimes you have some some tough days in the NFL. These games, you know, everybody get paid. Um, unfortunately, both sides did have a lot of injuries, so obviously praying for everyone. But um, you know, I feel like we really executed our game plan, especially once you know new players came in, and you know we did everything we had to do to get off the field to give our offense as many chances as possible. You spoke about those injuries, Al Woods being one of the uh, one of those injuries. What did this defense do to kind of adjust when you guys lost Al Woods? Uh, man, it, it happened so quick. Um, like in the, in the moment, you, you just have to keep you have to keep going. You have to just keep going with the game plan. Um, you know, obviously, I heard about the injury. I'm not sure if it's out, so I won't say anything. But obviously, hope he gets better. Uh, but you know, that's 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 why we practice, and that's why we have the the guys in the room that we have. Um, you know, when things like that happen, or you know, a player has to take a break, or you know, take a breather on the sideline, the next man up, the the way we play, the way we execute, doesn't change. What are the steps as you guys look ahead to Monday Night Football, hosting the Chargers here at MetLife, to kind of execute on defense even better than today? Um, well, first, always get healthy. That's the main thing. Um, then when we get come in tomorrow, you know, watch the film, um, judge it, judge it just like it was a loss. Um, understand what we need to do to get better. See the things that that we are good at, and just keep improving every week. Awesome. Thanks for your time, CJ. Thank you. Open your BetMGM app to claim your 50% live odds boost. Only at BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. New Jersey and New York only. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire in seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY or 1-800-GAMBLER.